when he was, Jesus was telling them all the things he was going to suffer and everything, he was going to die. And, and, and he, he looked at Peter and he said, well, in fact, he looked at all the disciples and said, tonight you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, no, I'm not going to deny you. I'll die before I deny you. What, what did Jesus tell him? Well, then I saw what you're going to deny me three times. God looks down in the heart of Peter. Yes, he Even though Peter, I know Peter loved Jesus, and Jesus knew that Peter loved him. And the Bible tells us in one place, it says, Peter, does thou lovest me? You know I do, Lord. Peter, does thou lovest me? Lord, you know I do. Peter, does thou lovest me? Then he got, he got the answer. He got the picture. I tell you, church, I thank God we love Jesus tonight. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad you love Jesus yeah. tonight? Yeah. Now I tell you, I thank God tonight, and I hope everyone that's in the sanctuary tonight <coughs> will not be ashamed of Jesus. Amen. I, I'm going to preach tonight that the Holy Spirit prompt me <coughs> to the church and to me. Are you ashamed of me? Are you ashamed of Jesus? You'll be surprised, church, at the Christian people that goes out to dinner and everything. And, and I don't think just I don't think, but actually you're still denying Jesus, you're ashamed of Jesus. They don't even bow their head to give thanks for their food. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And uh, we got to realize what the Bible says, and, and Jesus said in, in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, I want you to turn with me. We as God's children, we can't be ashamed of Jesus. And, and I hope, like I said, everybody's under my voice tonight, that you're not ashamed of Jesus. You say, well, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Well, I'm glad of that. But you know, sometimes God will give us the put us in a place to really test us like he did Peter. So sometimes we have to examine ourselves and so Lord, I hope and pray that I won't be ashamed of you. Because you know what the Bible says? Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Amen? Amen. And I'll tell you, church, it's, it's amazing how sometimes we, we are ashamed. And I hope we're not. The Bible says in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, also he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake, the same shall be saved. For what shall a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whatsoever therefore shall be ashamed of me in the by words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him who of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in glory of his Father with his holy angels. Now begin to think about well, why would you walk into the prompt something like it? Sometimes we need to examine ourselves. Sometimes you know what, church? We got to really recognize: Would I be ashamed, a man of Jesus? And uh, I begin to you know we can't afford to be ashamed of Jesus for one thing, because how much He loved us. He has taken all of our sins away. And I tell you, I believe Murray was the one that really showed just how much she loved Jesus, because the Bible says she kneeled at the foot of His at His feet. And begin to wash his feet with her tears and dry his feet off with, with, a, with her head of hair. And that showed the love of Jesus. And when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, she wasn't ashamed to be under the cross next to Jesus. And she wasn't afraid. Can I hear an amen? amen. So we got to be careful. I thank God tonight. And you need to thank God tonight. And say, Lord, I hope and pray I'll never be ashamed of you. But if I do, Lord, I pray that you'll forgive me and, and let me know, amen, that you still love me, amen. amen. And I tell you, church, like I said, there's a lot of people out there are actually ashamed of Jesus when it comes to certain things in their life. 
And when they're testing and trying, Jesus will try us and test us, and the devil will try and test us. He gets us in a situation. Amen. You may be in that situation, Mallory. You've been through that situation. Now, I would show Jesus still loves you, but sometimes he lets us know just how much that we really do love him. Are we willing to sacrifice our life? Are we willing to give everything up for Jesus? I'm willing to give everything by the grace of God, everything that I've got, amen, to show Jesus I love him because he took my sins away. Thank God I don't, I'm not living in sin. Nobody has to live in sin because the Bible says when we come to him, glory to God, he takes our sins and throws them into a sea of forgiveness, glory to God, and we don't, we don't have to worry about sin anymore as far as having it in our life. We're, we've got that... They call that the, the robe of white. Thank God we got a robe of white. Glory to God. And we'll walk around. Praise God. And I mean God is happy with us. Glory to God. Because we're not ashamed of Amen. him. Church, I mean, Amen. Church, the, the little things in our life show whether we're ashamed or not. And sometimes we don't even recognize. Like I say, church, I, it's amazing how some people will go out and eat dinner and, uh, and, uh, and shame uh, or either they don't think to bow their head and give Jesus or God thanks. Oh, the, in fact, I would be afraid to say, eat the food without giving thanks for you. Amen. But the way this world is anymore, but just think about that. It's amazing how some people do that and don't think about it. But that's not showing the love of Jesus. That's showing, amen, that you actually, you're actually down deep inside that you're ashamed to bow your head and to give thanks. Or you're ashamed to witness for Jesus. And I'll tell you, church, we should never be ashamed of, amen, to witness of Jesus. I know we live in a world, praise God, that they're mocking Jesus and they're mocking the priests and everything. But church, the only life they've got and the hope they got is us. And we need to stand up and not be ashamed. Of Jesus. Amen. If you're ashamed of Jesus, amen. and say, Jesus, come and take my sins away, and then he'll be ashamed of us, of us. amen. Right. When it comes in glory, I'll give a Lord a hand to that church. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pray the Holy Spirit tonight, church. He has taken our sins away. The Bible says, for in him we live and move and have our being. If Jesus is living in us and have our being, then church, we should, we should always be a constant reminder that Jesus is living in us and we're the light of the world and we're the salt of the earth and we should, we should give that light and we should give that salt, amen, to a lost and dying world and not be ashamed of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Amen. I lift my hands up, glory to God. Now I bow down, praise God, an old fashioned altar, praise God. That one time, church, I was a kind of embarrassing shame of Jesus. But before I got saved, and I'll tell you what, the brother lived down to an old fashioned altar. He does something inside Amen. of me, glory to God. And I raised up, yes. I wasn't ashamed of Jesus. I couldn't wait to get to work the next day. Ain't going to tell everybody I got saved and Jesus is living in me, glory to God. I'm happy, church, because I'm going to lift up Jesus. See, we should be happy because he took our sins and your sins away, and you should never be ashamed of the one that saved you by amen. his amazing and his grace. Can I hear an amen? amen. The Bible amen. tells us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 19, he will subdue all of our iniquities, and that will pass all of our sins into the depth of the sea. I mean, church, he took my sins and he took your sins away. And praise God, that way we can go to heaven because anybody got sin or not, they won't be able to go to heaven. But thank God we're on the way to heaven tonight, church, and we ought to be rejoicing and not be ashamed of Jesus. Uh -huh. Now, Jesus, Jesus had to recognize this because he wouldn't put it in the Bible. He wants you to recognize, never be ashamed of Jesus, never be ashamed of bowing your head in front of the public, and, and, and never be ashamed maybe to lift his name up because, church, he saved us, he took our sins yeah. away, and we're on the way to heaven tonight. Oh, glory to God. See, let me tell you something. When you get saved, he puts a gladness in your heart. How many can remember when Jesus saved you? It, it pays us to remember, church, that when Jesus saved us to tuck our sins away. And church, he, 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 he put gladness down in our soul and into our hearts. And, and church, we can walk around with joy and peace. And, and the Bible tells us, as we look in the Psalms uh, chapter, um, chapter 30, verse 10, Hear, O Lord, and, and have mercy upon me. Lord be thy my helper, thou hast turned my mourning, amen, into dancing, thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness, to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee, and not to be silent. 
Church, there's too many of God's people are silent, amen, because God put a gladness in your heart and took away all the, the, the things that we, that, we, that we couldn't shout, we couldn't have joy, and we didn't have no peace. But when Jesus saved you, he put a joy and a gladness in you, glory to God, that you can have joy and peace in a time of trouble. I tell you, church, we should be faithful, amen, and we should sing his praise and lift him up, glory to God. Every time we get a chance, we ought to praise him and lift him up and glorify him. And church, when we come to church, especially if you if you don't, if you're ashamed of Jesus in your church, how much greater would you be ashamed of Jesus out there? Amen. We need to learn to come to church and give him praise God and worship Jesus, lift our hands up, praise him, and if you feel like dancing, glory to God in the spirit, you yes. need to do that. Are you listening to what I'm saying, right. church? I'm not ashamed to lift up by Jesus, and you shouldn't be ashamed to lift Amen. him up because church he saved you, glory to God, and he put a gladness in you. I've got gladness in me. I've got joy. I've got praise Amen. in me because I thank God for what Jesus does. And church, let me tell you something. We, I know sometimes we may be guilty. I may be guilty at times of church. We need to, amen, not to be ashamed of Jesus, no matter where we're at or who we're talking to. Amen. I remember when I first got saved, and I had that joy and everything, but after you get saved for a while, guess what happens? Exactly. You begin to go back in your ways for being careful. And I go, you go to, when you go to a doctor, how I many went to a strange doctor? And the Holy Ghost prompts you say, you need a witness to him. Yes. Or you need a witness to her. And you know what you did? You didn't do it. Did I hear an amen? Well, maybe the next time. But you know what, church? I, I for now, if the Holy Ghost prompts me to witness to that person, I'm going to say, I, I, God, I say, Holy Spirit, just give me a way in, amen. and I'll, I'll lift you up, amen. Jesus will give us a way that we can yes, lift him up and show the world, show that person that you're not ashamed of Jesus. I'll give him a hand clap, church. Amen. The Holy Spirit is telling me there's people out there that are actually ashamed, amen, to lift up Jesus when Jesus saved them and put a joy and a gladness in them, and they need to share that gladness, and they need to share that joy, and they need to share that peace and hope that Jesus gives them, and if we become, amen, man and women in God, and say, I'm not going to be ashamed of you, because I don't want you to be ashamed of me, if, if the Lord maybe, maybe tells me to witness, and I'm going to witness, if he tells me to death, I'm going to dance, glory to God, if he tells me to lift my hands up, I'm going to lift his my hands up, I'm going to glorify God, can I hear an amen? Amen. I tell you, if you see me in town some words or at a source thing, don't don't ask me to pray for you. If you don't if you don't want me to be excited, That's right. Amen. If you don't really show Jesus to show that you have Jesus. Yes. Oh, this is what I'm saying. Amen. Because Amen. I think we ought to show Jesus any words and every right. words. If somebody say, Brother, may God need prayer? Amen. I'll say, right now, glory to God, I'm going to pray for you. And I'll start praying for them. Now, I don't make a fool of myself, but I'll pray for them. Amen. Get my hands up to the Lord. Amen. And that's going to heal him and touch him and deliver him. Because I'm not ashamed of Jesus. And they're not ashamed of Jesus because they asked somebody to pray for them. Amen. In a public place. And that's where we ought to be. Because somebody needs to see that. Amen. And somebody needs to hear that. That they can have faith and they can have hope. Just like that person that asked for prayer. Yeah. Oh, pray. I'm feeling this tonight. Oh, Too many of God's people tonight are ashamed of Jesus. And pray to God that you're not going to be ashamed anymore. Amen. That you're going to lift up. Or you may love Jesus in your own way. But you're ashamed to actually to, to lift him up the way that the Holy Spirit wants you to lift him up. Amen. It's getting quiet. in here and quiet out there. Oh, God. Amen. Help us, Lord. I'm not saying that you're ashamed of Jesus. I'm just saying the Holy Ghost, God knows our heart and everything. And church, we tell you, we need to say, Lord, I, by the grace of God, I will never be ashamed of you. That's right. And don't say it in a way that Peter did. Amen. Peter had a little bit of humbleness about him and everything. And Jesus would let him slide by. But he had come up with a big holy spirit, and, and, and Jesus had to rebuke him and everything else. And let him know, amen, he knew, Jesus knows our heart, he knows our spirit, he knows inside of us. Can I hear an amen? amen. And so thank God when we come to do those kind of, of, of things or places where we're at. Remember, God may be testing you to see how much you really love him. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. But he gave, he, he gave us gladness in our heart. And I tell you, you ought to love Jesus tonight because he walked in your shoes. I said he walked in your shoes. Yes, so there are some people, 
there's a boy, after I started pastoring a while, and people you know, had, had deaths in their families and everything, and that's probably the hardest job for a pastor anyway, and you're trying to comfort them. Right. And, you, and you say, uh, I know how you feel. Well, that's a lie. Because I never, I never really faced that kind of death with my family. But when your loved ones get real close to you, and you're close to your loved ones, and then when they pass away, and you can have those feelings, amen, then you can say, I understand. Amen. Or when people are going through things, you say, I understand what you're going through with, and you have to know you don't have the slightest idea what they're going through with. And I'm here to tell you, church, one thing. Jesus knows what we're going yes. through with. Yes. He's, been, he's, a, he's a, been in our shoes, glory to God. That's why he's a high priest tonight. The Bible says he's been tempted in all things. He's been tried in all things. And he understands, glory to God. And when you go to him, glory to God, he can, he can touch our infirmity because he's been touched by him. Yeah. Even though church, he's he never seen it. But he knows how we feel. He yeah. knows our hurt. He sees our disappointments. He knows our disappointments. And thank God, church, that's the reason we shouldn't be ashamed of Jesus right. because he walked right there with us yeah. and just keep on walking with us until we get to the other side. I'll give him a little hand. Hallelujah. We're living in the time now, amen, that actually people are praying. See, we're living in the time you can't, you can't really uh, claim what you believe in everything. Right. I mean, they, they, they come down on you. They mock you, make fun of you, tell you you're a you, uh, some off the wall thing because you're a Christian that you love Jesus, you're radical, and all this other stuff. Let them talk all they want to. One of these days when they stand before Jesus, they'll be sorry. Right. Amen. 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 Oh, glory to God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. The Bible says, But in all things, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him. Seeing them, we have a great high priest that he's passed unto heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Let us lift up Jesus. Let us, amen, glorify Jesus. Let us arm, uh, arm, honor Jesus. Because sir, we, we, if we say we're a Christian, we love Jesus and we're not ashamed of him. And we need to profess it. Glory to God. Jesus is by everything. I live in him. I move in him. I have my being in him. And the devil can't take it away from me. Oh, glory to God. For we, for we said in verse 15, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly, glory to God, unto the throne of grace, that you may obtain mercy and find grace and to help in the time of need. Glory to God. I thank God, church, we got somebody that knows how we feel. Walk when we walk, going through the hurts that we went, going through some church, and he knows how to answer our prayers, and he knows how to move on, on the needs of us, because he's been there. And church, I thank God, and you know what, that I'm not ashamed of him. I pray I'll never be ashamed of him. But church, he may try me tomorrow. He may try you tomorrow. But thank God, by the grace that you give me, glory to God, I'm not going to be ashamed of you, because really, when, the, when Jesus, or, or when God begins to prop us and test us, there's a reason behind you. Amen. See, God knows everything and everybody. And sometimes he uses us that we can be a blessing to other people or have hope for other people. And that we can't be ashamed to stand up. Jesus knew something. They said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. So somebody, amen, Jesus had to recognize some of the people was ashamed of him. That's right. And the Bible says... We don't need to be ashamed of him. You don't need. You should be ashamed of your Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You should be ashamed to come to Him as a, as a sinner. You should be come to, ashamed to come to Him as a saint of God. You know why, church? Because He gave us power over all the enemies. There's not one enemy out there that God hasn't given us power over them. And I thank God tonight, church, we can glorify God, we can praise Him, and we can worship Him, even though the enemy come upon us, praise God, like a, the Bible says He comes, amen, trying to come upon us, and trying to destroy us and everything else, but thank God He gave us power over all the enemies, and the enemy can't do nothing. I believe sometimes God will, the devil will go to God, 
He said, I want to get to search brother so-and-so or whatever. And just like Job, he said, let me add Job. Yeah. And he said, I can't get to him because you got a shield around here. Yeah. And church, I thank God tonight he's got a shield around every yeah. born again believer tonight. And he can't get to us. I don't care how bad the house cold the enemy is. He can't get to it unless yeah. God allows him to. And when God allows him to, he still gives us a power and authority over all of our yeah. enemies. And the enemy, amen, can't get the best of us. Right. And it seemed like the enemy got the best of Job. But the Bible said in the end, amen, God. God give him the great powers, amen, that he got the power over the enemy, and thank God he said, I know my God liveth. I know my God liveth tonight. Do you know that your God yeah. liveth tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. And we're going to stand that. And there is no this, and we're going to see God just yeah. as he is, and we're going to glorify him and praise him, but thank God he give us power over all the enemies. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 19, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. Any means. Not, nothing can hurt us, church. That's why we need to worship him and praise him and not be ashamed. Because, church, he's done everything in the world for us. And not only that, the Bible says he gave us power over the enemy. But he said he put our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Glory to God. And that, that'll give you something to shout about right there. The Bible tells us that the God... Jesus sent the disciples out to, to, to preach the gospel, to heal people and everything. And they had to come back to Jesus and said, thank you, though they was happy and rejoiceful. He said, you give us power over all the enemy. And Jesus said, don't rejoice because you got power over the enemy. See, he recognized that we have power over the enemy. He said, rejoice and be glad because they were glad because they had power over the enemy. But he said, be glad that your name is written in the man book of life. And sure, that's what we ought to be. We ought to be happy and rejoicing in Jesus because our name is written in the Lamb's yeah. Book of Life, and we're on our way to heaven. Amen. But church, we can't be ashamed of Jesus. We got to stand up to times when we don't feel like we we, we don't well not, we want to, but we're, we're ashamed to. Can I hear it? Amen. Amen. Now, this was pumped in my spirit tonight. Somebody needs to hear that. You can't be ashamed of Jesus. If you're ashamed of Jesus, come to know there's people today in hell today. Because they were ashamed to come at an old fashioned altar and bow their head down and ask Jesus to forgive them of their sins, they had to come the same way everybody else did, but they were ashamed to come to Him. Can I hear an amen? And therefore, they, they're, they're lost and to do. Amen. And there's people today that, will, that needs a healing. And the Bible says that those are sick, call for the elders of the church and, and have them to pray for. But they're ashamed, amen, to come and amen, ask them to pray. Don't ever be ashamed, amen, to ask amen. the church. Amen to pray for you because that's biblical. Can I hear an amen? amen. We gotta stand up, church, and not be ashamed of Jesus. Are oh, you listening to what I'm saying tonight? Amen. Out there in the tube, listen to what I'm telling you tonight. If you're ashamed of Jesus to give your heart to him, you'll be lost and doomed just because you're ashamed of him to say I, 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 I'm saved by the grace of God. Like I said, I got saved. I couldn't wait to get to work that next day. And I'll tell you, I, we, I work for some ungodly people too. Now here, Brother Kozak can tell you, they would, they would mock you, make fun of you, and everything else. But you know what, church? I made my mind up. I'm, going, I'm, I'm not going to be ashamed of Jesus. Amen. This boy, God, never forget. I had to work with him. He, he was all right, but he, he was still sinner and ungodly. And I was trying to quit smoking. If you ever never smoked, don't never do it. But right. uh, I, I smoked and I had, to, I had to give it up because John had something in store for me. And at that time, I really didn't know it. And he, he would he would take a cigarette light up and he go <laughs> blow that on me. Right. But you know what? It made me feel so sick. I couldn't stand the smell of the smoke. See, God will help you in all the things. I hear an amen. But you can't be ashamed. And, he, and I'll tell you, every chance I got, I'll witness to him. And finally, after a while, he went to another trimmer. Glory to God. <laughs> they either get in or get out. Praise God. <laughs> we, can't, we can't be ashamed. Of our Lord Savior. Amen. Amen. In closing tonight, we can't be ashamed of you can't be ashamed of your Lord Jesus Christ, of your Lord and Savior, because He's your hope tonight. He's our only hope that we have. We're living in a lost and dying world. And church was every time that we not we need to come. When we're in trouble, we need to come to Jesus. When we're having trials, we need to come to Jesus. You'd be surprised at some people when they're, when they're going through a battle and not ready to give up and everything. 
They're, they're ashamed to come to an old fashioned altar. Right. Thank God that I, I wasn't ashamed to come to an old fashioned altar when I was in trouble, when I was heavy burdened, when I was laid with all the things in my life. I wasn't ashamed to come to the cross, uh, to what I call it the cross, to an old fashioned altar. I don't care what the people thought. Amen. As long as God knew what was in my heart, I would pray, amen, that God would uh, deliver me, God would help me. The church, we can't be ashamed to come to an old altar when we mess up. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Never be ashamed to come to the altar. Never be ashamed, amen, to ask the church to pray for you that you need prayer because church, that, that's one way of showing the world and showing the church and showing the devil that you're not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is your healer, your deliverer, and praise God one day he's going to take us home because he gave us hope, and I'm going to hang on to that hope. Amen. amen. I'm saying in this life we have Jesus on, we'll be the most miserable, and we are. The Bible tells us in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 to 19, if in, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all, all men most miserable. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15, For this time, for this we say unto you by the word of, of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall, uh, until the coming of the Lord shall not forfeit them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall, be, shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You talk about, well, now I, I like that song, Bones Are Rattling. <laughs> the you, them bones ain't going to rattle that quick, that long. I mean, the Bible said we're going to come out of that grave in a great of the night. Amen. Amen. I know he's talking about Israel because in tribulation, like, these old, them old bones are going to come together. And that's what's going to happen in the, in the, in the rapture. Because them old bones will easily come together, and their seeds will come on, praise God, and they're going to, that spirit will come back in them, and they're going to live for them, and they're going to go be with Jesus. That grave is going to burst open, church, and just in a twinkle of an eye, we're going to be with Jesus. Amen. Oh, give me one of the hands, church. All that Paul Ezekiel said, he's, that, that was, was the restoration of Israel. But thank God you can use that. Right. You can use that through the, trip, uh, through the resurrection. Amen. Because I tell you, Jesus comes back. The Bible said that every Christ is going to rise first, and we with your light of riches will be called up together to be with the Lord. Amen. Forever and forever and forever. Otherwise, we're not going to be separated no more. But them bones going to rattle and everything, they ain't going to have time to rattle. God's going to be fast. That them bones are going to come together, everything else, just like that. You know? He said he's coming in a twinkle of an eye. That's how fast he's coming. That's how fast the grave is going to burst over. Glory to God. Aren't you glad you're part of that, my brother? The church, we can't be ashamed. Now, I don't know why God gave me this message, but I, I, I'm preaching it. Yeah, I, I'm preaching it myself, and I hope I never get to a place, and I hope you never get to a place that God will test us, or the devil will test us, and we'll be ashamed to lift up the name of Jesus. He's your Savior. He's your Deliverer. He's your soon coming court King. And we should never be ashamed of it. Amen. But if we do fail, we have a forgiving God. Amen. Like old Peter, he fell. He fell and he cried. Asked Jesus to forgive him. That's all we got to do. We should never be ashamed. Never be ashamed to confess Jesus. Amen. Never be ashamed to witness for Jesus. Because he's your, he's your Lord and Savior. Would you stand tonight?